Yo, Mo B, man, drop that shit, man. <laughs> This is the way black people do it, man. We don't sit on our face and jack out oh. <laughs> and pay dingo. <laughs> oh, man, how we doing? Great to see you. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Yes, indeed, got a body like a sex king. You're killing me with your attitude to match mine. Don't be phony because I hate it when you act like you don't know me. I've been stressing in the spotlight. I want the to be the only one in the fifth ward. We need her. Cause we need a lot of black people to get jobs and clean up the neighborhood. So we were talking about jobs and some of the problems that young people have getting jobs. So you were saying that we feel like black people feel like it's, you know, they stress equal opportunity, but they don't show it. And, you know, I, I, I've experienced it, so that's why I'm saying it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of favoritism, you know, especially in the fast food restaurants. You know, it's just, it's not fair. And when you were um, saying about the, the youth job fair, and that it was able to get a lot of jobs out there, but my concern about expanding on some initiatives for jobs in the community that we look into try to get some type of partnership with Northwestern or North Shore Hospital. Because even if you're not at the $15 minimum wage, if you are a young person that is looking for a job and you can get a job and you're closer, close enough to either walk or catch a bus, that can defer the the amount of money that you make because you're not spending that much money in transportation or you're not so far away from Evanston where you're traveling like an hour or two hours. And I thought that that would be helpful, some of the initiatives that we can start to try to build up the community yeah. by working with the young people. Yeah. I agree with that discussion. Alderman Carolyn Murray invited us into her home in the Fifth Ward. Most of the things that we had already started with the monthly ward meetings and just talking to my neighbors and just walking the streets, how they come up to me and they talk to me about their issues and their concerns. But I really, really want you to know that we have started some things and I think the only way that we could really bring those programs and resources to the fifth ward is for me to run for alderman, continuing the work that I have already initiated under the Loris Homes and the community. So many times people reach out to me about issues when it comes to safety and my opinion on community policing and I've made recommendations through the years. I've talked about an outpost being in the fifth ward. I've talked about some other police engagements as it comes to them actually having meetings with the ward every month as opposed to piggybacking and being involved with our meetings, I think that the police now should be taking initiatives within the community to build their own relationship. I know that there has been so many times with us, something happens in the neighborhood and they want you to call or text or, or give them a tip, but in reality, it's not going to have that effect if you don't have that relationship. So I'm seeing the young men and I'm seeing the, just the young brown and black kids feeling not so respected, feeling not so represented when it comes to community policing. So that's one of the issues that I believe strongly that we should overcome in this community. I've, as you know, I've been a strong advocate against gun violence. 
even before it, it affected my own family. But I want to see the gun buyback return in a way that is collective to the whole community. I know that the Fifth Ward started it here. I mean, well, we wasn't the first one. We were the most successful one. Let me make that perfectly clear. But I believe that working together with all of the city, we could bring a program back that would be that much more successful.